Bella Coulson is a masterpiece and a show that I just can't stop thinking about. It is a show where if I just think about the ending, I can't help but get emotional. I didn't think I would watch a show better than Barry this year, but Bella Coulson was so great that it was able to best that fantastic show. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about the ending of Better Call Saul later on in the video at a more appropriate time. Usually, prequels suck. They are an unnecessary cash grab that are much weaker than the original beloved product that do very little to flesh out the fictional world. They also feature new characters that you're just waiting for to die, and any of the original cast feel like they're encased in so much plot armour that the show or film or game or whatever lacks attention that the creators clearly try to get. Better Call Saul gets around this by focusing on the character of Jimmy McGill and the world of lawyers, for the most part anyway. By doing this, characters usually aren't in any mortal danger, and tension usually arises due to the results of a trial. Moments of great danger are so infrequent that they become more memorable and shocking. Characters who are new to this world are the ones that are usually put into harm's way, and any time that a character does die in Better Call Saul, it feels like a natural conclusion to their arc, as if fate determined that was their end. Better Call Saul works because it didn't try to be Breaking Bad again. It didn't try to replicate the huge explosive sequences like the twins trying to kill Hank, or Gus killing the Salamancas, or Walter killing Gus, or the train heist, because the writers were smart enough to know that those moments wouldn't work as well when you know half the cast can't die. That's not to say that there are explosive moments like this, because there are, but they happen so rarely that they have much more impact and therefore are much more tense as a result. Better Call Saul works because it fleshes out the universe of Breaking Bad by taking seemingly inconsequential throwaway lines and turning them into memorable moments. Nacho is a fantastic character played by the wonderful Michael Mando. Michael Mando was one of the few actors in Better Call Saul that I was already familiar with before watching the show. This is obviously for his iconic portrayal of Vass in Far Cry 3. So, boom, I shot him. The thing is... He was right. Nacho is a tragic character, not too dissimilar to Jesse. But unlike Jesse, Nacho isn't able to escape the horrible life he has made for himself. It's heartbreaking watching a character that you've grown to love struggle to get away. All was knowing that due to them not appearing in the original, that they are doomed to fail. Lalo Salamanca was a late addition to the Better Call Saul cast, but due to Tony Dalton's terrific performance, has been able to cement himself to some people as the best villain in the entire Breaking Bad universe, which is no small feat when Gus Fring, Hector Salamanca, Todd, Walter White and Tuco Salamanca exist. Lolo feels like an unstoppable force and someone whose mere presence causes unease in the rest of the characters. He falls into a similar category as Nacho, where due to his being a prequel, his attack on Gus feels doomed from the get-go and makes his death feel fitting and earned instead of cheap and done to explain why he's not around in Breaking Bad. The series adds a lot of extra layers to Mike Ehrmantraut, who often feels like the only character with some kind of moral compass. His interactions with both Gus Fring and Saul Goodman are very entertaining as you see how their relationship developed over time. You also get to hear Mike's regrets, and his love for his family is made even more clear here than it was in Breaking Bad. Howard Hamlin is a character that most people probably found annoying when they first started Better Call Saul, as he was often viewed as a fawn in Jimmy's side. However, as time went on, it became clear that Howard actually wasn't the evil boogeyman with a bone to pick with Jimmy, but instead just a decent guy that was taken advantage of by people that he looked up to and admired, and wanted to admire him. He was a man ultimately undeserving of his final fate, and in a universe where every character was dipped in many layers of moral ambiguity, he stands tall as one of the few genuinely good guys. Chuck is almost the opposite of Howard. He's a character that you initially really like until you discover his loathing of his brother and his many attempts to stop his brother from bettering himself. Chuck only saw the worst in his brother despite the good Jimmy actually did and some of the blame for Jimmy's descent can be placed squarely on Chuck's shoulders. Their relationship is very upsetting as there are numerous opportunities for the two of them to make peace with one another and yet neither do. As Jimmy says, it's something he'll have to live with. Kim Wexler may be my favourite female television character of all time. She stands up for herself and is a fantastic lawyer, yet she is not the pristine, perfect human being you were initially led to believe she is. She is flawed. She eggs Jimmy on into his transformation in Saul. She ruins an innocent man's life because it's fun. However, she accepts her shortcomings and faces her punishment no matter how much it hurts her. Then there's Bob Odenkirk's iconic character. You know a character is complex when people consistently refer to that character by three different names and said character doesn't suffer from multiple personality disorder. Jimmy McGill is the man doing his hardest to live his life the right way and make his brother proud. 
He's not perfect, but he at least tries. He loves Kim Wexler with all his heart and will do anything to make himself, in his eyes, worthy of her. Saul Goodman is the man Jimmy tries not to be, but ultimately decides to become. He's obnoxious and looks after numero uno above all else. He is a bad man who does anything for cash. He loves what he does, but it's just so clear that Jimmy's pain is still there inside of him. Gene is a man who has nothing. He doesn't have Jimmy's relationships, and he doesn't have Saul's success or stardom. He longs for both, but ultimately settles for Saul, which in the end costs him his freedom. Not since Red Dead Redemption 2 has there been a prequel this good. But of course Saul works because it recontextualizes Breaking Bad and changes how you view things. For starters, in YouTube clips that feature Saul, he comes across as the main character instead of Walter or Jesse. Another thing is that Walter White doesn't come across as the badass that you once perceived him as. Knowing all the trials and tribulations that the characters had to go through in Better Call Saul makes what Walter does seem more annoying than it did the first time you saw it. Walter White was not some badass that took things too far. He was a pathetic, emasculated man who had accomplished far less than he should have. In his misguided attempt to make something of his life in his final years, Walter tore down everything that everyone else had built up and ruined everything that they had dedicated years of their life to. The first time you watch scenes like this... Do not go near him. Ever. Are you listening to me? Or else you'll do what? What did you say? Stay away from Pinkman. Or else you'll do... What? You're sitting there going, Yeah, Walter, you tell him. You're so cool. Now, when you watch it. What did you say? Stay away from Pinkman. Or else you'll do... Walter, what are you doing? He's giving you an out. Walk away. Don't let your ego cause you to go tear everything down around you. It's magnificent how a prequel can alter how you view the original protagonist, despite them not appearing aside from two scenes in the show's final season. Breaking Bad was a masterpiece. Better Call Saul is too, and Al Camino may have split people, but I love that as well. In the current debate over which is best, I think I would have to give it to Better Call Saul over Breaking Bad. Now, Better Call Saul has the advantage. Since I watched Breaking Bad for the first time whilst Better Call Saul Season 5 was airing, and by that point, I already knew most of the major events of that show. I had seen Gus's death, Walter's death, Hank's death. Not my death, that one surprised me. But Better Call Saul I knew nothing about, so it was able to leave a bigger impact with me since I didn't know what was coming. All three are great and deserving of your time, and I think it is fitting that Walter dies, Saul is imprisoned, and Jesse is able to escape to a hopefully better life. Is it time... I think it is. Let's talk about Better Call cool Saul's ending. Now endings are very important to me. They do impact how much I enjoy something. You give me a masterpiece and then give me an okay ending. I'm not going to think about or talk about that anywhere near as much as I would have. In fact it's entirely possible that a mediocre ending could ruin the whole thing for me. And make me regret even watching the thing. On the flip side, give me some generic fluff that somehow leads to a beautiful ending. Then I'll talk about that forever. I can ignore how boring it was because of how great it ends up. Endings are so important to me that I plan to make a video on the subject in the future and you can be sure that Better Call Saul will be mentioned there because it is fortunately neither of the two examples I mentioned prior. Better Call Saul is a masterpiece start to end. It against all odds sticks the landing and delivers what could be my favourite ending of any television series. Once those credits began to roll I felt like my heart had been yanked out of my chest. I really wanted to cry. It was so upsetting watching as Jimmy and Kim shared that final cigarette together, that last moment to cement their love for one another. You know an ending is good, when I have to go online to see if people think Kim would keep visiting Jimmy because the alternative is too upsetting for me. The idea that this is their final meeting is too much, and in the end, it doesn't even matter. I realised I was so anxious about trying to find out whether this was their last meeting, because no matter how many times Kim does or doesn't go visit Jimmy, this is my last time seeing these characters. Whether they say goodbye to each other or not is irrelevant because I've been forced to say goodbye to them. And when you think about it like that, you realise how beautiful this show is. This was a wonderful journey and I'm so glad I got to watch it. Everyone who worked on this show deserves a big pat on the back and a good night out because together you created one of the greatest television shows ever made and one I won't soon forget. Thank you for watching.